Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing the full workflow between Adobe Miximo, Clo 3D, and Blender. We're going to start by animating the avatar in Adobe Miximo, then we will animate the clothing on that avatar in Clo 3D, and finally we will export our model and bring it into Blender. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we are happy with our avatar. If we want to do any editing of the mesh itself, any sculpting, adding any accessories to the avatar like sunglasses or shoes, we want to do that in this stage. I'm pretty happy with my avatar, so let's go ahead and jump right into Mixamo. So we are going to really quickly export our model as an OBJ, make sure every part of the model is selected. You can also marquee select, and we are going to go File, Export, OBJ. We are going to name our file whatever we'd like, and then we just want to make sure that selected only is checked. That's just going to make sure what is exported is everything that you just selected. And we're going to go ahead and export. All right, so this is the Adobe Miximo interface. As you can see, my model's already been uploaded, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat the steps and show you how it's done. We're going to start by clicking Upload Character and loading our OBJ file into Miximo. All right, it looks like everything worked and our OBJ avatar is now in Adobe Miximo. You're gonna wanna upload an OBJ file if you don't necessarily need to have textures on your avatar. If you wanna upload a character and avatar with textures, make sure you zip all of the texture maps into a folder with the OBJ and upload that complete folder. So again, if you don't care about textures, just upload the OBJ file. And if you wanna keep textures with the avatar, make sure you zip the texture files and the OBJ into a folder and upload that. So now we're gonna rig our avatar using Adobe Miximo's auto rigging part. We're gonna click next. We're gonna make sure we place our um, arrangement points, so to speak, on the right portions of the avatar where it instructs us to. So chin, wrists, elbows, knees, groin. Um, then we're going to click next. We're going to give it just a minute here to rig this avatar and then we should be good to check out the animations. Cool, so it looks like everything is working good. We're going to click next. And then we should have our rigged avatar in this window. From here we can just select the animation we like and we should see it being reflected in the 3D window. Let's go ahead and find a basic walking sequence. I like this walk sequence a lot for females if you just need a straightforward walk. And I'm actually going to make another video shortly on how to duplicate a walk sequence, so to extend this walk infinitely. But for this video, I'd like to find an actual walk sequence. So I'm going to specify my search a little bit, and I'm going to select one of these. So I'm going to click Catwalk Sequence 1 with the male avatar because when you choose the female avatars, unfortunately it assumes she's wearing a high heel and you kind of get this elevated heel look, which I don't like for this kind of sporty streetwear avatar. So I'm going to use the male sequence. I think it's a little bit more masculine, but I still think it works. And then we're going to want to slow it down a little bit. Um, you don't have to, but I find it helps a little bit with recording clothing animation. And then we are also going to extend the character's arm space, maybe to 59, just a little bit so the arms and hands are not colliding with the hips. Um, you can also make sure that the frames are extended to the maximum on each side, meaning you'll have a larger window of, um, of animation. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. We're gonna do FBX, with skin, if you have texture, without skin, uh, if you don't have texture, it doesn't really matter. So um, you can just leave it with skin, 30 frames per second and no, no keyframe reduction. And we're gonna click download. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in Blender is file import. And we are gonna bring our recently downloaded FBX file into Blender. We're gonna give it a minute to load here. And when it loads, it should load with all of the animation stored because it is an FBX. So if we scroll through, we should see the animation play. Everything looks good to me. So as we can see, she starts off walking right away. 
What I'd like to have happen is her move from a T pose smoothly into the walk sequence so we can animate our clothes a little bit nicer. So the first thing that we're going to do is select the model and then we are going to change the view mode of the timeline into graph editor. And when we change it to graph editor, we should be able to see all the animation data like this. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can see the complete animation sequence is right here. So the first thing we're going to do once we are at this step is make sure everything is selected and we are going to click G and then we are going to click X and we are going to move the data a little bit to the right. So the start of the animation is about 30 frames in. Now we're going to do this because the first 30 frames we're going to use to transition from a T pose into the animation. So once we've successfully moved the animation data over, we are going to go back to frame zero or one. And then we are going to go into pose mode and we are going to click pose transformation or clear transformation all. So again, that was pose mode, pose, clear transformation all. And we should get our model in a T pose. The next thing we are going to do is click I and click available. So click I and then click available and we are doing that because we want to set this as a keyframe. And now if we scrubby through the animation you can see she slowly transitions from a T pose into the animation. Alright so the animation is looking good. The last step we want to do is click out of pose mode back into object mode. Click object apply rotation. So we want to apply the rotation of this model because if we don't and we export it into Clo 3D, she will be walking up the Y axis. So since we want to keep her walking along the floor, we are going to make sure we go object mode, object, transform, I'm sorry, apply, rotation. All right, now that we're ready to export, make sure everything is selected. For good measure, you can actually right click here on the armature and go select hierarchy as well, just to make sure every part of this model is selected. And we are going to go file, export as an Alembic. Now, I think sometimes people get mistaken and export this as an FBX, but that will not work bringing it into Clo. You need to export as an Alembic. This is actually going to save the animation data frame by frame, so you can then bring it into Clo. So export as Alembic, name it whatever you'd like, and then make sure that select objects is checked. We're going to export the Alembic, and then we should be able to bring it into Clo. All right, so just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to bring the avatar we just animated into an existing Clo file of mine. We're going to start by deleting the avatar that is in the file now. We will go File, Import, Alembic, and then we're going to select the file that we just exported. We're going to want to make sure it's set to open and the scale is going to vary based on how you exported it from Blender. So you might have to play around with this, but mine is going to work in meters. We're going to give it a minute here to load in all the animation data and then we're going to go through a brief tutorial on recording animation in Clo 3D. So all the animation data should be loaded now. We're going to go check by moving from simulation down to animation. And then we can scrub through the timeline to make sure the animation data is actually there. Uh, and it looks like it is, so that's good. So we're going to go ahead and do one thing quickly before we hit record. We are going to go in the UV editor. And we are going to make sure all the UVs are laid out in the 0 to 1 sector. So this is going to help us when we go to export our texture maps and link them in Blender. But just make sure your UVs are where you want them before you record their animation because that cannot change and neither can the fabrication. So let's go back to animation and let's hit record. And it might take a few minutes and it might take a few tries. Again, revisit the tutorial I created a while back to go over the details of animation. But once we have this animation recorded, we can export it and bring it to any software we'd like. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play it back. And if we are happy with the animation, we are going to export it as an Alembic. 
So we'll do file export and we're going to choose the Alembic with the surname OGAWA and then we'll go ahead and export it and bring it into Blender. So really quick, we're just gonna make sure that we have these settings for exporting our Alembic. Make sure thick is checked, um, UV coordinates is checked, include avatar is checked. Uh, 30 frames per second is good to be consistent with how we downloaded this avatar. Um, and then you can either choose entire play region or entire region or play region. I'm just going to export the entire play region, but you can determine what frames you want to export um, in the animation section of Clo3D and then click play region only. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and we will go file import Alembic and we're going to just select what we just exported and import it into our new Blender scene and it is importing really big, so I should have adjusted the scale. But for demo purposes, I'm just going to roll with it. So now we can see that our animation is working in Blender. That's great. And the final step of bringing it into Blender, and of course you can, you know, <laughs> make your entire Blender scene, adjust lighting, do a million things, so that will probably be in future tutorials. But our last step into getting our actual textured model into Blender is clicking on the Alembic, going into shading, and then creating a material for it with the texture maps. So we're gonna quickly export texture maps from Clo. I'm gonna show you how to link them into your Alembic in Blender, and then what you do from there is totally up to you. So I'm just gonna quickly demo how we export maps from Clo 3D. I will make a more detailed tutorial on how to create normal maps, bump maps, etc. in Photoshop. Uh, but for this tutorial video, we are just going to assume that you have already applied your texture maps to your Clo 3D file and you are just looking to export them. So for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to make a quick diffuse map by changing the color of the fabric here and then going over to UV editor and exporting our diffuse map. Um, so again, if you would have already linked a normal map or an opacity map or a roughness map or whatever into your Clo 3D file, you're going to check those as well. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'm only going to export a diffuse map, which is color. So we're going to click, a, uh, we're going to select a saving path. We are going to name our file, and then we will just export the B the PNG. So now we have the maps or map that we are going to apply to our meshes here. So we're going to start by clicking on the cloth. We will click new to create a new material. And I'm just going to demo adding a diffuse map. So we will go add texture, image texture, and we will link color to base color. And then we are going to grab this diffuse map that we just made. So this should work fine. Um, if you ever have an issue where you see the material is showing pink, maybe there's something wrong with your export settings from Clo. Um, I have that happen sometimes. So what you do to fix that is just simply bring the texture maps into Photoshop and just export them again and reapply. So again, if this is for some reason showing pink when you add a diffuse map, um, just bring it into Photoshop, re-export it, and it should be good. But ideally, the map just works right away like this. So as you can see, we added the diffuse map successfully. So from here, you'd likely go on to add all of your different maps that you've exported from Clo, and then you should have a working animation with textures. We can go ahead and add a quick texture to the avatar as well. Um, but here's where you're going to actually get creative in Blender. You know, the point of this video is just demonstrating the workflow from Miximo to Clo into Blender. So hopefully this answered all of your questions. From here, we should be able to see our working animation with the textures. Um, and I hope that this you know, video helped you get some understanding of this workflow. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them in the comment section.